nestled in the heart of Hyderabad is a cluster of villages. As recently as 1952, this was an area of poverty, of villages without schools, without land or medical care, and often without enough food or water. Today, the streets are neat and clean. Houses have been remodeled or rebuilt entirely. The fields are offering a yield they have never before known. Villagers of this area are enjoying a feeling of security and well-being for the first time in their lives. New school buildings proudly stand as monuments to the newly found initiative and enthusiasm of the people. Even the school children sense the new spirit which is abroad in the land, a spirit of industry and craftsmanship, of opportunity and achievement. Some of the people of the area were once unsettled tribal people. Now, for the first time in their lives, they are building permanent homes and at last feel that they really have a share in the national heritage. New villages are being built where before land was lying uncultivated and uncared for. Entirely new communities have been created through the resettlement of people who at long last have received land they can call their own. A formerly landless people are finding occasion to build and use cooperative stores for the sale and exchange of their produce. Today, across the land, a new spirit of confidence and optimism is spreading from village to village, from state to state. Cultivators are setting forth to develop reclaimed land in fields previously abandoned because of erosion and soil exhaustion. Village level workers are on hand to give counsel and help. The tribal people who are now settled are today thinking principally about the future, but they have not forgotten the rich culture of their past. express themselves in ancient dances which reach far back into their aboriginal past. Watching with the villagers is their new friend, a young man whom they know as their Gram Sevak. <laughs> Thank you. 
would ask the question, what has made possible the tremendous change in the lives of these people? We would best find our answer from a young man who is seated inconspicuously in the crowd. He is their beloved Gram Sevak, the village level worker sent to the people by the government of India, not to administer, but to serve. Krishnan is one of thousands of young men who have been sent out by government to serve as extension workers in the village development project. He has received thorough and practical training at a village worker extension training center conducted in his state by the Central Ministry of Food and Agriculture under the guidance and supervision of the State Development Commissioner and State Director of Agriculture. Throughout the length and breadth of India, Young men like Krishnan are beginning their day with a period of prayers, meditation, and inspirational talks. At the outset of the training process, the highest ideals and traditions of selfless service to the people are instilled in the trainee's thought and outlook. The young men are reminded that they follow in the footsteps of Gandhiji, father of the nation. The dignity and challenge of common toil are held forth as the basis of successful service to the villagers. The trainees are reminded again and again that they are being sent not to be served, but to serve. The training center at Himayat Sagar in the state of Hyderabad is one of the 44 centers located throughout India in rural areas of different climatic and cultural conditions. Separate centers are also located here for the education of project executive officers and social education organizers. Based on a scale model for a planned village home, students gain actual experience in constructing houses which they can help the villagers to build for themselves. Such houses can actually be constructed in the villages with a cash outlay of only 350 rupees. Of special interest is the smokeless chulla, which the students also learn to make for themselves. Learning by doing is the motto of the training centers. Thus the trainee is taught to come to grips with the practical necessities of village improvement. A fuel saving in the amount of more than 55% can be gained through the use of an efficient chulla. Problems of sanitation and public health receive careful attention in the training process. Students learn how to construct an inexpensive water seal pit latrine, which they will later encourage villagers to place in use. Throughout the community projects program, the Gram Sevak will use such inexpensive methods of raising the standard of health and well-being of his village friends. Animal husbandry and principles of veterinary medicine are vital phases of a Gram Sevak's training. There is no substitute for learning to do it yourself. If the village level worker is to help the cultivator repair and even manufacture the tools he needs, he must become a multi-purpose worker. He must know not only about crops and farming, care of cattle, public health and sanitation, but also simple principles of mechanics and engineering. He must know, for instance, how to construct and operate a smithy. Even the mysteries of the diesel engine must be explored by actually breaking down the engine and making it work again.
the disciplines which students gain from the give and take of living and working together are highly important in their preparation for village life. In his tremendous task of education and information, he must also know how to use modern tools such as motion picture projectors. With these he will show films to the villagers. Up to now only a few women have been trained. But today 27 special centers have been started to train women for work with village families. Eventually these trained women will be working in all village development areas. Other training centers of the Central Ministry of Food and Agriculture are located throughout the length and breadth of India, reaching from the plains of the south to the majestic Himalayas far to the north. of the mountain people are unique among those to be found throughout India. Extremely high altitudes and unbelievably rugged terrain and the resulting difficulties of transport combine to make even the struggle for survival most trying. which the village carriers bear are not only those they carry on their backs. Problems of soil cultivation in the rocky mountainous areas, further complicated by a short season for food production, result in an economic disadvantage of great importance. Talented young men from Himachal Pradesh are attracted to the training center at Mashobra where they receive specialized preparation to equip themselves as village level workers in the mountain communities. Along the terraced mountainous slope students receive training in a fruit tree nursery which will prepare them to assist the people in improving the quality and output of a fruit crop already famous around the world. Research is being constantly conducted to improve the strain of each type of fruit. Every conceivable combination is being attempted through a continuous grafting of different strains of fruit. Trainees are being equipped with a vital know-how which will enable them to help the villagers improve their yield and raise their standard of living. Here again, you don't read it in a book, but you get out and get your hands in the dirt and learn by doing. Students at Mashobra include young men from different parts of the picturesque Himalayan regions.
The various pests that attack and destroy the fruit are themselves attacked and destroyed by modern methods of pest control. Another subject of special interest in the Shimla Hills is beekeeping. Admittedly, the new trainee approaches this subject with a certain measure of caution. It isn't that he doesn't believe the instructor when he says the bees won't hurt him. It's just that he wants to take his time getting acquainted. The soil and climate of Himachal Pradesh produce an ideal environment for a crop vital to the needs of the whole continent, potatoes. First, by careful use of commercial fertilizer, the nutrient soil of the terraced hills is prepared to produce the potatoes which furnish a seed supply for the whole of India. These uniquely virus-free potatoes are distributed throughout the country and thus furnish an important basis for the potato supply for the nation. Trainees are instructed in the best methods of planting and cultivation so that they in turn can help the villagers increase the quality and quantity of this vital crop. The trainees spend half of their time actually out living and working with the villagers, sharing with them what they have learnt at the training centre and in turn learning from them those lessons which only time and experience can teach. All over India, the same kind of exchange is taking place. Just as the mountain streams water the plains, so the people of the plains, like those in the hills, are sharing and working for the vision of a brighter tomorrow for India's farms and villages. In a magnificent building at Kota in Rajasthan, which was formerly a palace, a village worker extension training centre has been established. The ancient towers now look upon a new generation of young men dedicated to the service of a new India. Palace Baradari is the scene of graduation ceremonies at the end of a training period. The diploma which the student receives certifies that he has completed one year of agricultural study plus an intensive six months of training as a village level worker. Across India each year, more than 5,000 young men are completing their training and being sent out as Gram Sevaks, servants of the village. The technical skills which the students have acquired will not be as important to them as the attitudes which have been instilled in them by their teachers. They are reminded that as they live and work in the villages, they follow in the footsteps of one who dedicated himself to the advancement of India's village people.
the trainees will remember that from the very first day of their arrival at Kota, they have been on the move. While half their time was spent in the classroom for organized instruction in agriculture, public health, social education, cooperatives and extension, in the other half they have gone out to the fields and to the villages. Their study began with things basic to the needs of the village. How to design and build a most efficient Persian wheel. As the fields are properly irrigated and the crops increased, an economic foundation is provided for other village improvements. Every visual means is used to acquaint the trainee with basic principles of botany and plant pollinization. Their study moves from classroom model of a primitive village plough to field observation of its use and limitations. The inexpensive moldboard plough is explained and demonstrated, first with the scale model on a classroom tray. And then the plough itself is taken to a neighbouring village and hooked up to a cultivator's bullocks so that the trainees can actually observe its deeper cut and how it turns the soil. classes conducted in the field have proven their overwhelming advantage. From the scale model to the actual chaff cutter, the trainee finds that most of farming is still hard work. Activities which brought the students into direct personal contact with the village cultivator proved to be the core of the training process. How to build and use a hand-operated winnowing fan is not overlooked in Rajasthan, where breezes are rare at the harvest season. Pest destruction, malaria control and other elements of public health are taught under the guidance of the district medical and health officer. Identification of the disease-carrying insects and actual experience in their destruction are a part of the training process at all of the centers throughout India. In Mysore, at the Mandya Training Center, South Indian trainees like those of Rajasthan study the problem of malaria control and use of insecticides spraying village homes and stagnant mosquito breeding ponds in the villages. Like trainees everywhere, students from this Mysore center go out to spend alternating months living and working in the villages. And like all Gram Sevaks, receive extensive training in public health procedures. Their purpose is to help the villagers learn to work out a public health program of their own.
When the trainees arrive in the Mysore village, they work under the supervision of a public health inspector who resides in the area. As they set forth to conduct their survey, it is to determine whether proper vaccinations have been given, especially to the children of the community. The trainee learns how to meet traditional resistance to the idea of vaccination. When smallpox inoculations are lacking, and if consent of the parents is secured, the vaccination is promptly administered by the public health inspector. As the people of the village bring their children to receive a simple but effective treatment for running sores, they find in the future Gram Sevak a sympathetic and capable friend. The village level worker is spoken of as friend of the people and is today one of India's most beloved servants. As he teaches the women of the village how to manufacture their own soap, the Gram Seva trainee is also learning to understand the people and is every day becoming more closely one with them. The people of the land recognize him as an important new element in the new India. Soap making, sewing, child care will be among the many skills that will be taught to village women by the new women extension workers now in training. In Mysore villages, the Mandya trainees, like trainees throughout India, learn to conduct literacy classes. Helping villagers to learn to read and write is one of the most important jobs of the extension workers. The trainees also learn how to organize and hold group meetings in the village and how by social education to win the understanding and cooperation of the village as a whole for schemes of village improvement. New drains are being constructed in villages throughout the state under a cooperative program in which each villager is asked to dig that part of the drain which passes in front of his own house and also to voluntarily help in other parts of the village. Each man who owns a cart also agrees to transport at least one load of material to the work area. By doing it themselves, by working together, improvements are made which would be otherwise too costly.
aided by the effort and the knowledge of the trainee, the villagers themselves, skilled and unskilled, install a complete drainage system which will protect the health and improve the appearance of their village. Wherever the program of community improvement has reached a village, the results are evident in neat, clean streets, trim courtyards and improved housing. One can immediately see that the people of such villages as Chaudhri Magri in Pepsu state are proud of their communities and the advances they have made. Here in Pepsu, as in other project areas across India, the influence of the village level worker has reached out to challenge a people with a sense of responsibility and a realization of opportunity. Villagers who have never had a school of their own have joined forces and pooled resources to erect attractive functional school buildings. These schools going up in every project area are helping a new generation of villagers to become alert, responsible citizens of the new India. Already with the guidance of the village level workers, village youths are joining young farmers clubs to study kitchen gardening and animal husbandry under the guidance of their Gram Sevak. prize awards presented by the project executive officer encourage them to raise the finest vegetables and the healthiest cattle. Gram Sevaks who work in the Pepsu villages receive their training at the training center in Nabha. On the practice farm attached to the center and in nearby villages, they get practical experience in agricultural methods, in sanitation, in youth and community activities. At regular intervals, village level workers are called in for discussion and counseling at the training center. There they can discuss with trainees their practical experience with actual village problems. In this way, trainees are kept in constant realistic touch with the actual conditions and problems of village development work, which they will face when they complete their training and are assigned to project areas. The training center principal, the state extension directors, and specialists from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture counsel the village level workers and trainees. Ideas are exchanged and experiences shared on a project-wide, state-wide and nationwide basis. At this training center in Pepsu, as at all training centers throughout India, the majority of trainees are younger men, under 30, who have lived most of their lives in villages. Some trainees are older, more mature men and have a fine record of achievement as Gram Sevaks. The majority of the men who take the training to become Gram Sevaks are at least matriculates. In village work, they are finding a new way to use their education and their energies, serving their nation and its people. In order that Gram Sevaks at work in the villages may keep abreast of the latest information on village development methods, from time to time they join trainees for fresh study for example, of cattle breeding and local veterinary facilities. The resources of the state and center are coordinated to support and assist the Gram Sevak after he completes his training and is assigned to village development projects. The future of India is in no small measure to be found in the people of the land, those who till the soil and bring forth the harvest 
which must support the nation's economy. To aid the cultivators of India, more than 5,000 village level workers are each year being sent out to live and work in the villages. They are receiving their preparation at 44 training centers located in every part of India and administered and supervised by the Central Ministry of Food and Agriculture and the State Development Commissioners and State Directors of Agriculture. In tribute to these training centers, the Prime Minister had this to say. All over India, there are now centers of human activity that are like lamps spreading their light more and more into the surrounding darkness. This light must grow until it covers the land. <laughs>